Good evening. Welcome to another edition of Native Voice TV. I'm Sundas Martinez. And I'm Siwa Pili Rose Amador. And together, we are Native Voice TV. Yes, we are. We are the Indigenous people. Well, remember Terry Jones? Terry Jones, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma guy. <laughs> yes. We had the opportunity to go to Tulsa, Oklahoma for the NAJA conference, yeah. which is the Native American Journalists Association conference. Mm -hmm. And uh, got to meet a lot of exciting people who are in the arts, who are in television, who are journalists and different forms of native media. Yeah. You know, what surprised me is, is we, we met so many uh, filmmakers, you know, it, I didn't know that there were that many native filmmakers. Because you, know. you don't see the films, right? Yeah, because we don't see the films. I mean, where are these films being played at? You know, they right. should be played on every every channel, you know, every because they're good films. They're little I short know. films, and some of them are bigger films. You see a few during Native American History Month, and that's about it. Yeah. Yeah. It's Funny how bad. we met uh, Terry Jones, who is a filmmaker, and he's Seneca from New York. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened he was coming out to California, to Hollywood, actually to Los Angeles, to meet with uh, so Disney? Disney. Yeah, Disney, Disney yeah. And uh, so we invited him up to San Jose, and it wasn't when we were taping, so he did come by the house, and um, he shared some of his work with us, and uh, it's pretty good. We wanted yeah. to share it with you as well. Yeah, one of his films that we're going to be showing right now is called uh, Fry Bread Ends. And what I like about this Don't show... Don't give it away. No. <laughs> Maybe after. But it's a very good short film. It is. Yeah. Hope you enjoy it. Yeah. We're here with Terry Jones, who is an emerging screenwriter and filmmaker. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Terry, who is Seneca, who I just met recently in Tulsa, Oklahoma. But Terry is from New York. Welcome, Terry. Tell me about your tribe. Okay, um, I'm an enrolled member of the Seneca Nation of Indians, which was uh, part of the Iroquois Confederacy, um, located in uh, western New York, uh, south of Buffalo. I grew up in a traditional, um, the traditional way, which is um, we follow the code of Handsome Lake, and um, I think my reservation, we're split into two, and it's comprised of uh, 28,000 acres. Now, do you still have family there? Mm -hmm. I, have, uh, I have three brothers and uh, 41 first cousins. And, uh, yeah, it's a lot of people. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so what took you to New York? Hmm, what took me to New York? I always, I have this to-do list that I had when I was like 12 years old, and one was uh, move to New York, the second one was to be a doctor, and I think the third one is to get a house in England. But I'm happy just to move to New York. I, well, for me, moving to New York was more about, um, there were, the uh, towns near the reservation were really prejudiced, and um, uh, you'd walk into a store and they'd think that you're stealing, and it was all the misconceived, preconceived notions that we're all on welfare and we're alcoholics, and they're supporting us and we don't pay taxes. And I wanted to go to a place like New York where um, there was a big melting pot. You could walk down the street and people didn't know what I was. I was, um, I always wanted to be a filmmaker, and uh, when I went through school, my guidance counselor said, only 4% of artists actually make a living at it. You should get your business degree. So I'm glad I went to school. Um, when I left, co uh, left for college, I'm glad I went for my business degree. Because at that point in time as well, being a young Native person, um, I didn't know who I was. I didn't know my identity. And going through an identity crisis, and if you're an artist, I'm glad I didn't, I'm glad, um, um, I'm at the age I'm in, at now becoming an artist because I have an appreciation for it. Well, tell us a little bit about what you've produ produced and what we where we could see your work, et cetera. Okay. Uh, four years ago, I started um, um, making a documentary film. It's called Casino Nation. Um, it's about my tribe, the Senecas. We opened a casino three and a half years ago in downtown Niagara Falls. And uh, what we're going to do is show the effects of the casino on the tribe over a four-year period. Good or bad or both? Uh, what we what we like to say that w what we're going to do with this film, it's going to be it's a, actually a video. It's a snapshot of, so it's not an advocate for or against casinos because um, I think people who support casinos can see a lot of potential with with the money aspect of it. But we have the traditional people who also believe that um, money changes people, and we have to preserve our culture and our language. Um, 
and I think in the film, depending on where you fall in, I think you can understand, you'll get a good understanding of, of the other side. Now you just came back from Los Angeles. Tell us about your trip. Uh, I just completed my um, a year's program at ABC Disney. It was uh, ABC Talent Development Scholarship. Uh, I got a $20,000 grant to work on a feature screenplay. Um, my story was about a 13-year-old Native American girl's experience in an Indian residential boarding school in the 1940s. And it had a lot to deal, it was not so much about the school, it, it was about her experience at the school, but it was about finding this balance because she's stuck between two worlds. She has a very traditional grandmother, very modern mother, and they're fighting over, you know, she's 13, so soon she's going to have to choose where she's going to live her life. Grandmother wants her to live on the, you know, on the res and, and continue the traditions, the ceremonies, the language. The mother wants her to live in, in Syracuse, New York to, to pursue her American dream. That's interesting. On Native Voice, we're going to be doing a two-part series on relocation. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, pretty much, you know, a lot of the people that were in boarding schools because of re relocation and the impact it had on their lives, the ones who want to stay and the ones who want to go back to the reservation. So that is interesting. So that should make a good story. Yeah, and then um, I just completed the program on Wednesday, and our last day they set up meetings with um, studio executives, and I was actually able to um, pitch this native story and um, I think that's um, I, I really applaud uh, corporate America they're trying to make inroads so that we can I, I don't even like to say reclaim we're claiming our voice we're claiming our stories we're we're taking control over how the world perceives us and um, they were really excited about the project it's good that we're finally telling our own stories instead of someone else's version <laughs> right exactly because for me I always felt like it was it was almost like a anthropology assignment when people were telling our stories it was like we were under a microscope where I think with us allowing to tell our own stories you it's more in depth and it's um you get an insider view and it's true yeah, <laughs> yeah it's true <laughs> and also it comes down with uh, knocking down stereotypes um, last summer I went to the uh, Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe New Mexico um, ABC Disney had uh, uh, sponsored a TV film workshop so for six weeks, 18 Native American filmmakers, emerging filmmakers from all over the country, we, uh, we were brought together and we made six short films. And um, uh, it was a great, op great experience. Now there are very few people like you in the industry and you see more and more uh, migrating that way towards the film industry? Yeah, it's, uh, growing up I had always assumed that somebody else was going to be a filmmaker somebody else was going to do it it's going to be very competitive but just in the four or five years that i've been doing filmmaking um the native film world is really small it's, a, it's such a small place and we're all struggling and as you start um talking with one another you realize that we're all we're all we see the bigger picture where it is i said it's all about reclaiming and, and giving our voice to to our stories there's also very few actors as well. Now, can you tell us about some of the other projects you've worked on? Uh, yeah, I'm also um, on the board of directors of the American Indian Community House in New York. And um, one of the, we also have a gallery there as well. And I produced, um, we got a, a grant, a community grant from Manhattan Neighborhood Network. And um, the um, art shows that were, that were at the gallery, we would, um, I would film the opening and then we'd have an artist talk uh, the day after. And then I would, um, I'd film it and I'd edit it and then it would be broadcast on, on public TV. Oh, well, that's pretty exciting. Now, can we see some of your work, I guess, on your website? Yes, yeah. Um, um, I have one short film on there. It's called Freibird Atromedy. And uh, that was writ written and directed by Lala Matias. Um, and I ended up producing, editing, and starring in, in this short film. It's about a, a Native American man who leaves home for four or five years, uh, comes home, he comes home a vegetarian, and uh, chaos ensues with his relationship with his family because he's changed and they wanted him to stay the same. And it all really comes down to is this Indian fry bread taco filled with meat, and he's like, well, I, and they're forced, you know, they're persuading him to try to eat it, and, you know, that's... So did he eat it with beans instead, or what? <laughs> <laughs> that's left, at the end, it's, it's left up to decide. You don't know if he did. He's just kind of stuck in trying to decide. Well, the one I saw was the health center. Tell us about that one. 
That was fun. Uh, that was, uh, it's called Indian Health, I think it was called Indian Health Center, and that was written and directed by Jan Wumuvoya. Uh, I think she's from Lawton, Oklahoma. And uh, that was about, uh, we've all been to the Indian Health Center, the long waiting rooms, uh, long lines of um, getting misdiagnosed. Uh, and it just took a comedic uh, aspect of it. And that was that was cute. That was cute. I saw that one. Now tell me, what would you, what advice would you give to our youth who are thinking along the same lines? I want to be a film producer. I want to, you know, get involved in the industry. Growing up, I had always wanted to belong. I mean, we live in a society where we're told this is what happiness is. This is what beauty is. This is what beautiful is. This is what success means. But um, where I come from, and it's a lesson that I've learned getting older is that the creator gives us all special talents and it's up for us to find that talent within us and and go with it find it because if you don't do it he's going to take it away and paths everybody doesn't follow the same path and once i could understand that then i could um embrace my life you know i i did go to college but i didn't finish um i started doing filmmaking but i did it in the unconventional way it just sort of happened and um you know, I would really take advantage of any opportunity if it's a workshop or like a TV um, um, scholarship grant like I did with ABC. I would apply to those. There's very few people, I think, applying to them. There's more people applying to it, but it's not as, uh, it's not as, um, I don't think it's as hard to get in as you th might think it is. Now, I know, that, I know that in the arts, it's difficult because you normally have to have a another job right to pay the bills because it, it's uh, you rely on a lot of grants etc and you know it, it's difficult but you're encouraging them just to hang in there mm -hmm. yeah it's it is some um, and as native people the one thing that we've we know how to do is we know how to survive and persevere and um and taking a risk uh, when, you, when you're able to take, you can never really take a safe risk because no matter what you do even if it doesn't work out you're still going to learn something from it and what I did in my, when I was younger, I, I, would, I would almost keep myself from trying so I wouldn't fail, but I was also keeping myself from succeeding. In order to be a filmmaker, you had to go to film school and it was on film. Now with video, you can just get a video camera and, and tell your story. And that's, you know, we didn't have that when I was younger. We didn't have that. Hollywood was another place. And I don't, sometimes I don't even think we really need Hollywood. We can tell our own stories for, our, for each other. And thanks to the internet you can stream your movies online what are, what are your dreams what do you foresee for yourself your name up in lights mm, he, well the f the funny thing with with that question is um for me it's more about my legacy what legacy will i leave behind in this in this world and um for me it had, it had been like documenting who we are right now at this the time the period of earth the time that i'm on this earth i want to be able to show this is our struggles this is our happiness this is who we are because so i always like to think if our ancestors from a hundred years ago had media that we have now you know it, they're all relegated to books and, and pictures but if their message was to you know don't give up the land retain your sovereignty retain your language i think we would believe it well, we wish you much, much success, and it's so important that Native people support these projects, support these movies, support the actors, the producers, and go out and, and view these, all these, um, the, the films and movies that are being produced. Wendell Smith here. Yeah, yeah, sure I am. Hello? Hello? Wendell! Oh my god, it's good to see you! Oh, you haven't changed a bit, come on in! Oh my gosh, 
look at you. You haven't changed a bit. Hey. Hey. Hey, Uncle. Thanks so much for letting me come back on such short notice. Well, of course. Sure. You're always welcome here. This is your home. Mm -hmm. Where's uh, Selena? Oh, she's cooking and Willie's here too. Yeah, and you're going to camp out with Willie. Mm, what's for dinner? Uh, fried bread, meat, and corn soup. Why don't you go wash up and get ready? Hey, Mama. Come here. Sorry. still come around. Yeah, just because you left doesn't mean I can't come around here no more. Where are the cups? Where? Where's Willie's room? It's your old room. Have you forgotten already? Hey, cuz. Hey. What's up? What's up, son? Long time no see. It's been a minute. Yeah. How do you like the room? What the hell are you still doing with that? <laughs> yeah, isn't it nice? <laughs> Selena really tore that up. Man, she was pissed at me that night. Yeah, wow, she was. Oh, man. You had that one coming. I'm going to try out for the NBA soon. I've been thinking about visiting you in the city. Really? Why don't you go to Haskell? They play basketball there. Kansas is in the big city. I'm headed for the Big Apple. Man, you need to take control of your life. Hoop dreams are just that. Dreams. How many Indians are in the NBA anyway? I could be the first. You got your scholarship right, why can't I do the same thing? I know you want to escape, but life isn't always what it's cracked up to be. Well, I hope you find something soon. believe this. We got wireless internet, rusty water, and no cell phone connection. We don't even have decent utilities around here. We? Since when did a big city man like you become like one of us? Well, maybe if you spoke about referendum tomorrow, things might change around here. Hey, 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 listen. I'm not into politics. Politics affect all of us, old man. Nah. Honey, a young whippersnapper call me old man. Meat done yet? Yeah. Hey, Wendell, you're really gonna like this. Yeah, this is uh, what's left over that five pointer I shot out behind Maynard's place. Wow. Oh, it looks good. It does look good. Mm -hmm. Hey, you're not having trouble with that meat there, are you, Wendell? No. You know, I'm just trying to watch my sugar. I don't eat meat anymore. What? You're not a vegetarian. You know, Indian vegetarian, that's just another name for a poor hunter. Yeah. And I bet your parents would turn in their grave if they heard you were a veggie. We know that my parents are dead. I'm a vegetarian, not a veggie. I haven't eaten meat in four years. But aren't most vegetarians strong? <laughs> aren't most basketball players tall? Oh. Wash your neck. Hey, 
and, you know, I tried, you know, they never went without me unless they had to. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just don't understand, but we used to eat deer and elk and trout and salmon. Yeah, yeah but besides meat, we need to revert back to our native foods of corn beans and squash. Not any of this commodities junk. Uncle, you hunt, don't you? So? So, why don't you start farming again? Well, you tried to grow a squash plant as much before, on it? Yeah, <laughs> but all I got out of there was a squash about as big as my thumb. <laughs> and then a whole damn vine just dried up and died. <laughs> yeah, you know them white folks gave us some real prime real estate out oh, here. Uh, Even them weeds <laughs> complain. Mm. Man, go back and talk to them white folks when you need them vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> Wendell, a vegetarian? Man, you left an Indian and came back a Napoli. Listen, I got a lot of crap going on in my life right now. <laughs> oh yeah, I bet you just came back to collect your per cap. You know, you're a sidewalk no. Indian now. <laughs> I came back to see you all, and yes, I need the money. But I came back to see my family. Need the money? You and that big fancy shitty job? Listen, I just got laid off. Calm down, baby. It's okay. I mean, you grew up on fry bread, remember? You're a USDA baby. Yeah, I bet you wasted all your money on them there veggies. <laughs> <laughs> and that fast ass king, why win it? That's your really silly. That's the boy B. You know, Wendell, you can eat whatever you want. Yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, you go on and eat your bird food. Hey, Lester, let the boy be. Like I said, eat whatever you want. Hey, let's all have some. Yeah, you know, this is your welcome back dinner, not no freaking PSA. Either you get real good food or you get nothing. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. <laughs> it's good for you. Just you know what's your just favorite. Just a little bite. Come on. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Some say. Hi, I'm Terry Jones. I'm from the Seneca Nation of Indians. I'm a screenwriter and independent filmmaker, and you're watching Native Voice TV. You know which so, line I like? The uh, politrix. <laughs> yeah, <so> politrix, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How about, good. what do you think, he ate the fry bread or not? I would have. He doesn't, he doesn't <laughs> want to be a sidewalk Indian. Huh? I know, that's cute. <laughs> that's that was good. funny. But that's some good work, you know. Oh, um, yeah, definitely. We have to really encourage all of you to go out and see these films, support the Native artists, the filmmakers, the actors. There's a movie coming out with Adam October Beach. October 20th, and it's called Flags of Our Fathers, and it's about Iwo Jima and, um, I forgot the, the name of that uh, Marine. What was his name? Gee, it just Ira. like... Ira. Ira, yeah. Hayes. Ira Hayes. Wow, I just went... <laughs> But it's about him and his story, and it's called Flags of Our Fathers, coming out October 20th, and it's starring Adam Beach. So it's very important for us to come out there and support our actors and actresses and all of the things that Native people do, and even our show. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, yeah, Terry um, has a film coming out. He mentioned the one about the Casino Nation, mm -hmm. and I believe he said that has been picked up by PBS. So it's probably being produced, and it's something that you'll see in the near future, in the next year or so. I think he was saying POV. Okay. POV or PV, PVS, one of those. <laughs> it's been picked up. Yeah, it's That's been the picked up, thing. so look for yeah, it. You know, yeah. even get on the website and take a, take a look at it. Yeah, yeah that's definitely. great. So, and, you know, there's some other things coming up in the community. Okay. One of them is um, the comedians on October 28th. Mm -hmm. at uh, the CET Theater, the uh, Indian Health Center is having a fundraiser and they're having, I think, I believe four comedians. Oh. So those are artists again and it's a fundraiser so you can get in touch with the Indian Health Center to yeah. purchase tickets for that event because that'll be a good one. Yeah, Vernon Medicine Cloud would be the person to mm -hmm. contact and I believe you, they're not sold out yet so you could still get some tickets. Yeah. 
and it's important you have to support these people. Yes, definitely. And on November 2nd, I'm going to give you a personal invitation on TV in front of everyone. Okay. November 2nd, <laughs> on a Thursday, San Jose City Hall, the first Native American Heritage Celebration, and it will be an all-day program. There'll be booths, food booths out there, vendors, Native vendors, and, and most importantly is a lot of educational uh, tables from the different tribes talking about their languages, their mm -hmm. history, their jewelry. Um, and, you know, we invite kids to come out and schools to come out that day on that Thursday from 1 o'clock on to see what, you know, what's going on there to learn something about Native history. And that evening there will be a program in the rotunda at the, the new city hall um, with a dinner and uh, some music, a fashion show, native fashion show mm -hmm. of the different tribes, uh, regalia, so that'll be really nice. Wow. So you, and the Native Voice is one of the co-sponsors, so we will be there. Sundas will be there to autograph his I'll picture. be there. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we're almost Did you done. volunteer me? No. <laughs> I always volunteer you. <laughs> but as a co-sponsor, we do encourage you to come out to the first annual event at San Jose City Hall. Yeah. And it proves to be a real good event. It's sponsored by a lot of the Native com organizations in the community. So it'll be yeah. a good one. And I think we're yeah. out of time. And our theme will be Breaking in City Hall. That's the right. The right way. The Native way. <laughs> we'll see you next week. We'll, <laughs> we'll see you next week. And we're going to bring to you uh, a concert called Native Roots. And it has more Native artists. Good yeah. night. We'll good see night. you next week. Children's eyes.